Hey guys, so I put my finger, my dogs cut me off on my last video. I finally put my finger as to why I believe people are leaving magic and magic will die soon. And the overall, I mean, it's very negative right now, Magic the Gathering. It can't be just, oh, the reprint. Yes, you know, the reserve list and the reprinted and, you know, but it's not just that. And it's not only the overprinting. I, I think I finally put it together. I was actually watching Ruxin's video where he was chosen and did a sponsorship. We, again, there's no transparency. We don't know how much he got paid to do it. Uh, was he paid just the, you know, $2,000 in packs or was he paid cash plus $2,000 in packs? Who contacted them? You know, the transparency and the honesty behind these sponsorships, often there's an NDA which you cannot disclose how much you got paid, but it reminds me a lot of FTX, which was a giant crypto scam where a lot of the biggest financial YouTubers, Graham Stefan, meet Kevin. Um, and I, I think that's how I put two and two together. It's very strange. Like it's just like some, you know, something clicked and it came down to they are, you know, whoever is running this company, who's ever choosing the, is it a marketing agencies? There's no transparency, but beyond no transparency is they're picking favorites. Like Brian Kibler, somebody who has played Hearthstone for the last nine years, somebody whose last interaction with Magic was sponsoring Carmageddon, which was itself a scam that didn't pay out its winners, even though Brian Kibler got paid in full in advance and did very little to help the participation. The MPL, why I hated the MPL so much, the special invites, and how they pick the NPL members. You pick the same people over and over again. And some of them were employees at Wizard of Coast with 1300 ELOs. Some of them were cosplayers that, you know, had to start GoFundMe's to get, I mean, it's really ridiculous, right? When the minimal prize pool, I think even if you finish dead last is like $2,500 and you're starting a GoFundMe um, this is the type of people they favor. They favored certain agendas. They favor certain types of people. And I'll just leave it at that. And this is what I hate about magic so much. And I really do hate that the game has become this where, you know, they're always talking about inclusivity, you know, inclusivity, let's include everyone to celebrate. And then it's class warfare. So, I have a theory, and you watch my live stream, that the actual, yes, is there racism? Yes, is there ageism? Yes, is there a lot of isms that we can talk about? You know, um, sexual identity isms, right? Yes, I agree that there are issues with us, with those issues that we have to, you know, those demons we have to figure out. But very few people talk about classism. And classism is wealth, right? It's how much money is, hey, these people are wealthy. We are going to give the wealthy people more. So a proxy, like, let's take two examples. Who did they give this very expensive product to? Ruxin, Ruxin on many occasions. I like Ruxin, he opens, I think the last video I watched, he was opening like, he's trying to get his like, Starlight Exodia. Probably op he opened packs for like nine hours, eight, eight plus hours, just continue. I don't know how much money you need to, I don't know how much money those packs were, but it must have been something tremendous. And that was for himself. He opened packs for eight straight hours. That's insane. <laughs> Looking for Starlight Exodia. Um, so he's probably very wealthy. I know he his dad owns an accounting company he used to work at. So he's probably financially okay. If you're going to open packs for eight hours for yourself, you're probably okay. Hunter Pence, he owns a store in Houston, Coral Sword. He's made hundreds of millions of dollars in his baseball career. Does he really need you to give him a pack? Probably he can buy it. So all the people who would, can afford to buy the packs are being given them for free, while the people who cannot afford to be, are being marketed to. That's classism in a nutshell, where certain things favor wealthy people. Um, and when I, you know, there's a joke, right? That the wealthier you get, the less taxes you pay. And I'm not talking about percentage. I'm talking about, you know, I, I will throw his name out there, Donald Trump. It's been said that he has lost money every single year. Uh, Jeff Bezos, you know, any wealthy Bernie Sanders, any wealthy across the demographic, they 
rarely ever pay taxes because they have tax attorneys and the idea of tax attorneys, and many of you might not know this, but a tax attorney actually gets a master's in taxation. So unlike a regular attorney, a criminal attorney, or a, you know, fighting for your freedom, which you would think that person probably needs a little bit more education, the uh, only two areas in law which are really relevant to me, I guess, one would be patent, which requires a degree before you go to law school to take the patent bar exam. So it takes two bar exams. Taxation is the same thing, where actually you need a year of education and a master's in taxation become, before becoming a tax attorney. And what is the tax attorney's goal? It is not to pay more taxes, of course, it is to pay nothing in taxes. That's the goal. A good tax attorney can reduce your tax burden from whatever it should be to zero with loopholes and Kong and again, right? So that's what I figured out. I kind of made the connection is that, wait, all the rich, wealthy people are being given free packs early, by the way, up to a month, a month, a half early from when the poor people can buy the packs. And then on the flip side, get this. So that's one side of the story. The, the poorer people, they want to do proxies. They want to have a good time. And then Wizard Coast goes ahead and shuts down that proxy. We're going to talk about the legality of proxies. I, I have like, if you were my age, you grew up with Napster, LimeWire, Kazaa. And you grew up like, you know, on the news, they would be like, oh my gosh, this person got sued for $2 million, $200 million, right? Because it's per account. And it's crazy. Like RIA, I, I think one of the organizations, they sh for one Kaza, which is not even the biggest website that was Napster at the time, uh, they sued 18,000 people. <laughs> that, that's not the cease and desist letters they wrote. Let me make clear. They probably sent over 180, you know, for every, there's a 10 to one ratio probably. No, no, these are people with actual court cases that were sued in actual court. 18,000 by one music company through one sharing program. The amount of lawsuits that the music industry sued must have been suits, not cease and desist letters, okay? Lawsuits, there's a huge difference, of course. Must have been the hundreds of thousands. No, if that is the case here. And uh, Getty Images does this a lot nowadays. Um, they they out farm out these, you know, all copyright infringement things and they sue you for hundreds of thousands of dollars, but then you can settle for like, you know, $5,000. It's savage, it's legal bullying. So they're using their lawyer team, they're using their legal team to bully people. And, and who are they gonna bully? They're gonna bu bully people who can't afford lawyers. Right? So they're going to come after every proxy site and they might act, actually come at Napster. Once Napster went down, they came after app, all the Napster users because Napster had to turn over IP addresses. They had to turn over login information, emails. And that's what screwed everyone because th at that point, there's no deniability. Hey, we have your records. It says you downloaded these Metallica songs. Is this you? Like, oh, no, it's not. Oh, it has your email address. It has the correct IP. You even put your real name in it. You put your social, I don't know. You put all these identification. Are you sure that's not you? Uh, it was my kid. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. The kid can get sued too, right? So once Napster went down, one of the things that they had to turn over was all their data on all their customers who were using it, if you will. I think that's what Card Conjurer did. I think at the end of the day, they probably, you know, what, and that's why I'm trying to prevent. I'm trying to prevent that scenario where they're going to every single proxy maker, they're suing them, or they're, they're see, sending a cease and desist letter. If they want to fight it, then they sue them, and then eventually they have to turn over the usernames. That's a very dangerous thing because we saw that play out in the music industry where they started suing like every mom and dad, like you know, every mom and dad was afraid that their son was illegal or daughter was illegally downloading. I had a really good friend and she was really wealthy, but like this is how like it was. Everyone just made mixtapes, but where would you get your mixtape? And she was like trying to make a tape for her like soccer team, you know, to get pumped up. <laughs> She got a season, she got a lawsuit as well. And they, I think they settled it, but I mean, like I know a person who got sued 
and she was making mixtapes for her soccer team so like they get in high school so they can get pumped up right before the game I mean, I don't know if you guys remember this, but like mixed CDs were all the raids, right? And like mixed tape. I mean, this was not like uncommon. And there's like, oh, and back in the day, you had to buy the entire CD. You couldn't buy one song like you could buy today. So if you go to make a mixed CD of like 20 songs and they were all new songs. I mean, would you really spend the money to buy 20 CDs? Like today it's streaming and something, the technology is so much better now, right? But back then you had to buy the whole CD. And if you wanted one song, you had to buy the whole CD. And there were some really shitty songs in the CD that no one wanted. So it's like, uh, you know. This is interesting as hell to me. Because we, I, as somebody who's 35, I survived this once. I think Wizard of Coast is going to sue people. And those are the people without money. So when the music industry was coming after people, they went after people without lawyers first. Right? And no legal experience. And then they kept... Just like Card Conjurer, he basically admits he's guilty. And then he says, oh, everyone else is guilty too. <laughs> they went after these people. Because, again, they don't have lawyers. They don't know that they should not be interacting with a lawyer who's trying to F you over. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm guilty. But what about these other guilty ones? <laughs> God damn. When I read that, I was like, oh, God, I know what, exactly what Wizard of Coast is after. Um... Yeah, it's going to be interesting because it going to, it's going to be a fight. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer because they get sued. It's going to be a fight. I know what's happening. Like legally, I have this like idea. Like why are they doing proxies now? Why are they going after websites today? They have not, to my knowledge, again, I'm not really, I don't make proxies, so I don't, to my knowledge, they haven't really gone after proxy making websites before. So why today? What has changed that makes it, I mean, it's classism. People think all these other isms are, classism is the most dangerous of all. Because at some point in time, it's accumulation, right? At some point in time, the rich become billionaires and the poor become on welfare all the time. And there's no way to get out of the welfare system because it's designed to keep you in. And the rich, whenever they get richer, they pay even less money into society. It's fascinating, <laughs> guys.